Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Monga from the University of Paris Acclay and in this talk I'm going to present my PhD project which is about the evolution of metabolic network in fungi. Metabolism is a linked series of enzyme catalyzed chemical reactions that occur in the cell. Enzyme activity is identified with a numerical classification called the UC number based on the reaction catalyzed by the enzyme. This series of reactions can be represented as a graph where nodes in the graph represent enzyme activities and two nodes are connected if they share the same compounds in their catalyzed reaction. The metabolic network defines the metabolic capacity of the organism, that is the capacity to use substrate present in the medium and to synthesize metabolites. This metabolic network is therefore subjected to the constraint exerted by the environment. Consequently, each species has a specific metabolic profile in relation of the species with its environment. In this project, we try to understand how this complex network evolved. More precisely, we explored the conservation and the origin of fungal enzyme activities and the relationship between these events and topological properties of the nodes. To unravel the evolution of a metabolic network, we compare the metabolic network of various species. This will help us to identify modules shared by all species, pair in red, and essential for life. We can also identify modules that are clade specific, for example, here in blue. Or we can compare species from the same clade but different environment, or compare species from the same environment with different environment to identify specific environmental modules. Doing so, we worked with 174 fungal genomes and with which many well annotated genomes, we were able to construct a very well covered fungal phylogenetic tree that will enable us to do a very large scale comparative analysis. Fungi is an excellent model for these studies because they exhibit a wide variety of metabolic profiles. Among our fungal species, we identified 910 enzyme activities associated to metabolism. And for each enzyme activity, we have its phylogenetic profile, which is the present and absence of the enzyme activity across our species. For example, for this enzyme one, this enzyme, the profile phylogenetic of this enzyme is this enzyme activity is present in species one, but absent in species two and three, uh, but present in species four, five, six, and so on. This enzyme two is present in all studied species. With a phylogenetic profile, we classified enzyme activities based on their conservation across our species. And we identified that half of enzyme activity are highly conserved with at least 85% of conservation, that is shared by all fungal species, and the other half are lineage-specific enzyme activities. But if you look closer inside uh, lineage-specific enzyme activities, we can observe that some phylogenetic profile are similar, that is, these enzyme activities are present and absent in the same species. And using cluster method, we clustered enzyme activities based on their profile similarity. As a result, we classified 479 enzyme activities in 17 clusters. The biggest cluster we obtained with 420 enzyme activities are a cluster with only highly conserved enzyme activities. The size of our cluster range from 13 to 2. And for example, this cluster here is a set of enzyme activities absent in most of Saccharomyces. Interestingly, 8 out of 13 of enzyme, active, enzyme activities of this cluster are colocalized in the same metabolic pathway. Here, the enzyme activities are colored in green. So this phytologic profile-based analysis highlights topological but also functional relationships. But does this clade lose these enzyme activities or the other clades gain these enzyme activities during evolution? So to trace back the evolutionary history of each enzyme activities, we use a phyllostratigraphy approach to determine which enzyme activities have been lost and which are novel and specific enzyme activity. The idea is to search which enzyme activity present in fungi is found outside fungi in animal, plant, bacteria, or archaea. If the same enzyme activity is found outside fungi, the enzyme activity is considered as ancestral, considering that 
horizontal gene transfers are very rare in eukaryotes. For example, this enzyme activity is shared by all fungal species and also found outside fungi. Represents of this enzyme activity in fungi and outside fungi means that this enzyme activity were already present at their last common ancestor. Therefore, this enzyme activity are ancestral. Another example, these blue ones are only present in some fungal species and also found outside fungi. The most likely explanation of the presence of this enzyme activity in fungi and outside fungi is this enzyme activity were already present at their last common ancestor. Therefore, this enzyme activity is considered as ancestral but have been lost by all these species during evolution. Last one, this yellow enzyme activity is only present in some species and not found outside fungi. Therefore, this enzyme activity is a specific and novel fungal enzyme activity. With this approach, we identified that around 870 enzyme activities were ancestral, where half of them have been lost by some species during evolution, and we only identified 50 novel enzyme activities. At this stage, we don't have a relationship between our enzyme activities nor their position in the metabolic network. Then, we linked this evolutionary information with the metabolic network by investigating the conservation level of enzyme activities relative to their localization in the metabolic network. Here we have our metabolic network. Nodes in the graph represent enzyme activities. Red nodes are enzyme activities shared by all species. Blue nodes are ancestral enzyme activities but have been lost during evolution. Yellow nodes are novel enzyme activities. And using topological metrics, we showed that the highly conserved enzyme activities tend to be located at the center of the network and lineage-specific enzyme activities are located at the periphery of the graph. Moreover, highly conserved enzyme activities display a higher degree than lost enzyme activities, meaning that highly conserved enzyme activities share their compounds with more enzyme activities than lost ones. Then, we try to understand where enzyme activities with similar phylogenetic profile that is present and absent in the same species are localized in the metabolic network. Are they co-localized or not? So we calculated the distance between enzyme activities with similar phylogenetic profiles and compare with the distance between lineage-specific nodes and highly conserved nodes from the network. And here we showed that enzyme activities with the same phylogenetic profile are close to each other, which suggests a closely related function and there is a relationship between genomic level and topological level. Then, we try to understand where lost and gain mostly occurred within metabolic pathways. For example, in the glycolysis pathway, here we have a lineage-specific enzyme activity alternative to another lineage-specific enzyme activity. The risk is some species may lack both enzyme activities and it will break the pathway. But if you look at the phylogenetic profile of the two enzyme activities, we observe that species lack of the first enzyme activity possess the second one. So there is a selection pressure on the evolution of the two enzyme activities to keep one path available. And in 60% of the cases when we have parallel lineage specific enzyme activities, we always have a complementary phylogenetic profile. But most of enzyme activities loss and gain are enzyme activity that are alternative to highly conserved enzyme activity with 36% and 63% respectively. Or enzyme activity that are located at the input or output of the metabolic pathway with 39% and 29% respectively. To summarize the evolution of the metabolic network, Metabolic enzyme activities are mostly ancestral and metabolic network evolution are mainly driven by a lot of enzyme loss. And there is a relationship between genomic level and topological level. Highly conserved enzyme activities are more connected and are centrally located. Alternative and peripheral enzyme activities are loss prone and novel enzyme activities are mainly alternative to common ones. To end this presentation, I would like to thank to those who directly contributed to this project, especially my thesis director, Olivier Lespinet and Anne Lop. And big thanks 
to the evolution and comparative cozy organizers, which give me the opportunity to present this talk. Thank you very much.